Fritchens Fritz has been taking dye photos of chips and posting them on Flickr. Check out the link in the description for a ton more photos of his. Almost all the photos in this video are from him, and I'm going to layer my analysis on top of those photos. As a reminder, here's the Zen 1 Zeppelin die. The first generation Ryzen, the Red Ripper, and Epic were all made from this same die. And here's an overlay from Wikichip showing the different parts, including the CCXs and all the IO files along the outside. Notice if you subtract out the CCXs, everything else adds up to 125 square millimeters. I'm going to come back to this number in a minute. For the Zen 2 generation, AMD is using their chiplet strategy. They now have three different dies, the Compute die, or CCD, the Server I.O. die, and the Client I.O. die. They then mix and match these dies to create different products. Remember I just said the I.O. took up 125 square millimeters on Zen 1? The new Client I.O. die is exactly that size. And if you glued four Client I.O. dies together, you get a size of 500 square millimeters which is significantly larger than the 416 square millimeter server I.O. die. I guess you don't need four of everything. Let's look at the desktop version first. Here's a Zen 2 Matisse from the outside. And if you pop the heat spreader, you can see the chiplets. One client I.O. die on the left, and one CCD on the right, with an empty space for the second CCD. Now I've zoomed in on the CCD. The die is divided into two CCXs, with an Infinity Fabric link in the middle. Sometimes this is called Infinity Fabric On Package, and sometimes it's called GMI2. The two CCXs are sharing the one link back to the I.O. die. Within a CCX, there are four cores and L3 cache in the middle. Here's the client I.O. die. On the left side are the two DDR4 FIs. Now, memory FIs aren't memory controllers. There are two mirrored L-shaped structures behind each pair of FIs that might be the memory controller logic, which includes the RASCAS state machine, request scheduling, and AES encryption. If you're calculating the die area of memory controllers, you can't just look at the FIs. At the bottom of the screen are the two Infinity Fabric links to the two CCDs. Sometimes only one of these is used. At the top are 16 PCIe 4.0 SERDES, this is how the GPU attaches. In the corners, we see 12 more SERDES of a different flavor. And just below those, I spy eight more, even smaller SERDES. We know Matisse has a by four PCIe link to the South Bridge and a by four link that's usually for NVMe, but I'm not sure how that jives with what we see here. The lower right corner is probably a South Bridge. If you're using a motherboard that has a discrete Southbridge chip, like X570, then most of this logic will be disabled. But it's possible for Zen chips to run without an external Southbridge. Smack in the middle of the die is the scalable data fabric that connects everything together. Looking at these photos gives you some hints about how chips are designed. The chip's functionality is divided into rectangular modules during a process called floor planning, then each of those modules is designed by a separate team of engineers. You can also see many repeated copies on the chip. This divide and conquer approach is the only feasible way to design complex chips. Now on to the server version of Zen 2. Here's a Rome Epic package as you would install it into a server. All you can see is the heat spreader. Based on the ES, I'm guessing this is an engineering sample and based on the scratches, I guess it's been well used. And here's what's under that heat spreader. The 9 die MCM structure is pretty well known at this point. But under infrared light, we can start to see what's inside. Because silicon is transparent infrared, we can see the transistors through the back of the die. I already covered the CCD, so let's zoom in on the server IO die in the middle. This isn't very high resolution, but we can see the structures. On the left and right edges are eight DDR4 memory FIs, four on the left and four on the right. Memory buses need to be as short as possible, so the layout of the die, the package, and the motherboard are all related. By putting the memory controllers where they are, it makes the wires to the DIMM slots shorter. Here I've overlaid the DLIT and ROM on a motherboard, so you can see the routing of memory channels out the long sides of the socket. Although I've just drawn lines here, the actual buses are as wide as a DIMM. 
probably each memory channel is on a separate layer on the motherboard. Again, there are mirrored L-shaped structures behind each pair of phi's that might be the memory controller logic. On the sides of the die, we can see the eight on-package Infinity Fabric phi's to the eight compute chiplets. These are sometimes called IFOP or GMI2. Each one of these links is much faster than a DDR4 channel, yet you can see they're smaller. This is because they are designed for a much shorter distance and they only go over an organic package. They don't have to travel through an LGA socket and over a motherboard. The shorter distance also allows these links to use much less power. And here we see the routing of Infinity Fabric on the package from the I.O. die to the eight compute chiplets or CCDs. You can see the phi's are placed as close to the chiplets as possible. Again, because of the overlap, these links are probably routed on multiple layers on the package. Rounding out the I.O., here are the CERTES that can be used for PCIe or Infinity Fabric Inner Socket, aka IFIS. We can count 64 CERTES on the top and 64 on the bottom. These CERTES are much larger because they have to drive all the way out to the PCIe slots on the motherboard. Looking at the motherboard again, we can see the PCIe links route out through the front and back of the socket. In the center of the I.O. die, there are four large mirrored structures. These are the four quadrants that I theorized about in my previous Zen 3 video. It seems logical to me, although not guaranteed, that each of these quadrants is a derivative of the same scalable data fabric used in the client I.O. die. The photo isn't that clear, but you might notice a structural resemblance between the client and server version. Here's my speculative diagram from my previous video. Each SDF could connect two compute chiplets, two memory controllers, and 32 PCIe lanes. This would explain Rome's NUMA behavior. A memory access may have to hop through multiple SDFs to get to some memory channels. Here's how the speculation maps onto the die photo. You can see the design of the I.O. die allows local connections of all the components within each quadrant. Thus, you have two channels of near memory, four channels of medium memory that's 6 to 10 nanoseconds slower because it's one SDF hop away, and two channels of far memory that's 20 to 25 nanoseconds slower because it takes two SDF hops. Now, as I and several other people said, this I.O. die is pretty large, and just the speed of light to get from one corner to the other is going to take time. In Intel processors, you have to hop around the mesh, and in AMD, you have to meander through the I.O. die. The data will get there when it gets there. I don't know what these 10 blocks are. Everything else seems to be multiples of 4 or 8. They look like mostly RAM. Could they be a Snoop filter? Finally, the functionality formerly known as the Southbridge must be stashed in one of the corners. This includes USB, SATA, and some other low-speed stuff. It looks like the bonus PCIe lanes are in the lower left. Somewhere there's also the PSP ARM core. Now let's speculate about the Zen 2 version of Threadripper that's supposed to launch a month from now. I assume Threadripper 3000 will be a cut-down version of ROM. If it only has four memory channels, then we can disable half the memory controllers. And with fewer PCIe lanes, we can disable some of those. If half the chiplets have been removed, then we don't need the Infinity Fabric links for them. Is it possible to disable two of the SDFs? It depends whether there's a diagonal link. This is starting to resemble a diagram from Adored TV, where Jim said that a defect in one of these black areas would prevent the I.O. die from being used in Rome, but might allow it to be used in Threadripper. This is AMD's strategy. Their processors have a lot of silicon in them, but the silicon is cheap because they can still use partial good dyes in lower end products. One theory I wanna shoot down is the idea that you could literally cut the IO die in four and the resulting pieces would be usable. I don't think chips work like that. And in particular, there are some parts of the die that are not mirrored. I wonder if those are PLLs in the upper left corner. No disassemble. Finally, there are several versions of Zen 2 that haven't been released yet. It's rumored that the Renoir processor for laptops is not chiplet-based. Does that mean it's a single 7 nanometer die? And both the upcoming PS5 and Xbox Scarlet consoles are expected to use Zen 2 in semi-custom SOCs, but we won't see those until late next year.